Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to The Christian and the Culture, a program designed to help believers in the Lord Jesus Christ apply biblical truths to their everyday life. Now it goes without saying, but I'm going to say it anyway. We live in a wicked, fallen world. And God saved us from the penalty of sin, brought us into his family, adopted us as his newly born children, but he left us in this world with the hope that we would have an impact in our world. The best way to have an impact is to understand the teachings of the word of God. Yes. And he gave some to be apostles, prophets, evangelists, and pastor teachers to teach us the things of the kingdom that we may apply to our daily lives. This program is really based on Ephesians 4 and 11. We sit before you as pastors of the Lord's Church wanting to share with you those, those tidbits of knowledge that will help you apply the heart of God to situations that you face every day. We pray that this broadcast has been a blessing to you and the things that you've learned have encouraged you to stand against the devices of the devil. And as Paul said, having done all to stand, stand therefore and continue to stay in the fight because it's not over until Jesus comes back to get us off this sin-cursed world. So welcome again. We're glad you're with us. And today we are going to discuss the heart of God in relationship to his creation. Mm -hmm. Coming to you out of Romans chapter one. So grab your Bible, turn to Romans chapter one and two. And we'd like to share with you some important truths that will help you in your assessment of how God is handling what's going on in our world. Joining me, as always, are my two outstanding co-hosts, Pastor Brian Weatherspoon of Tabernacle Harvest Church, way out in Pottstown, <laughs> Pennsylvania. It is a long way oh, out. My. I'm telling you, I went there to preach one time. There were no overhead lights. It was no. way in the way in the boot. Pastor, how are you? I am well, Bishop. I'm well. Uh, Christian and Culture family, God bless you. So good to be with you today. Listen, you already know our rules of engagement. Move the coffee table out of the way. It's time to get into this work. Let's have fun. Amen. And also joining us is our resident theologian. Amen. Newly appointed MDiv newly and appointed. newly made <laughs> grandpapa. So he's got wisdom and knowledge all tied together. Pastor Tim Baldwin of Bethel Deliverance Church Northeast. Pastor, how are you today? I'm well, Bishop. Thank you so much. Christian of the Culture family, welcome back to another exciting show. And uh, as I always say, let's, let's do it, brothers. Let's do it. Let's jump in. All right. We're going to jump right into this because I know I'm going to get some conversation from <laughs> these two gentlemen of God that's probably going to shake you up a little. So listen, drink, a, drink some of your coffee or tea <laughs> right now and get it down because we don't want you to choke on it. Yeah. Because our first questions coming out of Romans chapter 1, mm. verses 18 through 32, powerful uh, dialogue yes. there. But I'm asking you guys, is God uh, a bystander? Is he a non-participating bystander based on how things go on? Pastor Brian, how, how, how do you see this? Uh, I don't think God's a, a bystander because he's, he's too much God to not be in it. Uh, but, but what I do think is he's, he's taking a, a, a different subtle approach on, on how to deal with humanity. The one thing we know about God is he loves his creation. So he loves, he really loves everybody and he would love that they would repent. But it, it almost seems like he's kind of hands off right now, letting man kind of come to his own end, if you will. Mm. And uh, so, but, but he's, he's in it from the standpoint that he still uses people like us to try to reach those and pull those out from that miserable, miserable place of darkness. So, so from one standpoint, I'm gonna say he's in it because he's got us here, but he is standoffish because I think his next action would only be wrath. Okay, now Pastor Tim, you get a difficult one. 
In Romans chapter one, Paul says, in the same way, men also abandoned <clears throat> natural relations with women and were inflamed with lust for one another. Mm. Men committed indecent acts with other men and received in themselves the due penalty for their perversion. Mm. Furthermore, since they did not think it worthwhile to retain God in their knowledge, he gave them over to a depraved mind to do what ought not to be done. So God is watching man take this, this downward trek, yeah. but all he does is give them up to their own resources. Now here's your question. In Genesis, the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah had come up to him. He intervened and destroyed them, yeah. okay? And we saw that happen even with Noah. The cry went up, he got frustrated, he destroyed them. Here in Romans, he doesn't destroy them. He gives them up to their own desires. Mm. Yeah. What message is he sending? That's judgment. That God is, is giving them over to their own desires. Mm. You know, some texts say, we read, it says he gives them up to a reprobate mind. We're used right. to hearing it that way, right? right. This, yeah. a depraved mind, yeah. which if God gives us over to a depraved mind, it means that God is, it's, it's almost like God takes his hand off. Right. You know, he's, just, he's like, you know what? because you don't want to live for me, because you're rebelling on the level that you're rebelling, I'm gonna give you up to your own rebellion. That's right. and, and you're going to get the penalty from your own rebellion. Your own okay, rebellion. That's right. so That's right. is there a natural response to sin, death and destruction? If the Lord does not intervene, then the natural response will take over. Absolutely, All right. absolutely. Even the scripture says that when sin happens, something dies. Like, okay, yeah. b b and the, the, the natural reaction is that, that something happens in, in, in the earthly realm, the natural realm, whether okay. it's in our bodies, whether it's our minds, whether it's, whether it's relationship, that when yeah. sin is present, then there is something that happens as a result of sin. Scripture says mm -hmm. that the wages of sin is death, yeah. right? When you look at wages, we, we almost don't pay, we almost, we don't pay attention <laughs> yeah. to wages, that it's, that's payment. Payment for. Yeah, it's yeah. payment for. So it's like, so, yeah. so, so you're being paid yeah, for sin. Are. So why destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Why not just let them come to their own end? Mm. There seems to be inconsistency. I'm tired of man. Their thoughts are continuously evil as it is now. Yeah. Boom, flood comes, kills them all. Fire falls, yeah. kills Sodom and Gomorrah. Now I'm not going to intervene. I'm just going to let them come to their, their own end. Can I, can I jump in here? He didn't really just judge. Yeah. He gave a small space, and you, you would call this maybe a little slight, uh, a, an attempt at a prophetic intervention, because Abram says, but if right. I find right. several righteous, you know, he, he goes down the whole list, will you spare them? And that was God's kind of, you know, open window to, I, I have some sparing them room, if you can find those that will at least turn around. Obviously, and we know as he goes down, he couldn't find those that would turn around. Like today, we are the Abram saying, Lord, <laughs> you know, if we find more others that will, we can finally reach or whatever, will you spare this? And I think God's, and, and like, like I said, his next recourse is wrath. The, the space we have now is so that we can win those who may be the one, the two, the 10, or the 50 that may come on out. Okay. It takes me back to my initial <laughs> passage. If God set this path, uh, this, this action on a certain path, mm. then he's a bystander. Because if yeah. this, if Romans is suggesting and teaching yeah. that the natural evolution of this pattern of behavior okay. is death and destruction, I got you. then God is sitting and watching it unfold. I got you, yes. And he's not doing anything to prevent it. Yeah, but but I, I, I wouldn't say that God is a standby, like God is standing by, because God always invites, there's always the alternative to our own devices, right? And so, so that when we, we don't accept God's way, God's direction for our lives, yeah. again, because God is always, I believe, always active when it comes to his children, especially. Yeah. And so, but he does allow us to make choices. Yeah. He does allow us yeah. to, 
to to deviate from from his will. But I don't think that God is ever just a a a God that just stands by yeah. because be, because it's like it's like all you have to do is choose me and yeah. I'm actively involved in your life. Yeah, 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 yeah. By simple choice, uh, the, by reason of how long this has been written, tells us that there's a window. There's a window from the time written to the time when God finally executes that wrath upon or allow it to just happen to yeah. them. That, that there's been a whole span of time on God saying, but I'd rather reach. I'd rather reach you than have to judge you. But, but here is what's coming if you continue it, and it will be by your own hands. So you, humans have a fantastic way of pointing the finger when the damage is done. And here's what God is saying, you won't be able to point the finger at me because I've given you the out, my word, my prophets, my preachers. I've given you every opportunity to come out. If you lose it this time, it is because you chose to continue to go down that way. And the penalty for doing so is you'll come to your own ruin. So the end result then of the behavior uh, framed here is that man sets his own path for destruction. Oh, God yeah. doesn't really do it then. He's not really in control of it. It's, he set it in motion. It's like, it's like God gave the proper reaction to the action. So here's what's going to happen. For your actions of lewdness and all these other things, the proper reaction that I've already set in motion is that this is, you're going to bring into yourself the due penalty for it. So God set it in motion, but man is actively and willfully participating in the process. So they're bringing the about their own condemnation. Yeah, they are. And God is watching it unfold. <laughs> Standing by, I think, is what you said initially. He's setting you up. He's setting you up as a bride. <laughs> I ain't saying we're, nothing. We're, we're doing I'm the not... battle here. This is, but I, okay, I agree. To, a, to a, an extent, and, I, and, I'm, and I'm with Pastor Tim, this is one of the first times you guys have ever seen me in the middle. Uh, but I agree with you both. God is standing by, but he's so much God, he can't stand by and not try to help. He, he loves people. He wants people. And so I think we're here as the agents to still be the hand of God to help to reach. Has he given up on his creation Not yet. as he did before Noah? No, because in Noah, it was it was a tremendous statement. Yes. You know, I'm fed up with people yes. because their thoughts are continuously evil. Yes. Yeah. And we didn't learn. We didn't learn. He, yes. he wipes out everybody. Another group of people come. Yeah. Noah himself. And we did not learn. Yeah. You know, is he done? No, because we're still here. Because we're still well, we're, we're exempt. We're Christians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the world well, is still but the world here is still as here. we know it. Yeah, the world as is still here it. as we know it. And so, so I believe, as Pastor Brian said, that this, this is a really a period of grace that, grace, that people have an opportunity to come to Christ, to mm -hmm. come to the Lord mm -hmm. before destruction, before death. Now, that's a death. hopeful Pentecostal yeah. statement. Yeah. Because yeah. when you say that we're still here and it's a time of grace, Three times in this group of past scriptures from 18 to 32 of Romans 1, God gave them up, gave them over, and gave them up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he pretty much gave them up. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, when we look at the world today, yeah. okay, if we do percentages, what percent would you guess the world is influenced by things of God? Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. Less than half. Yeah, way less than half. Yeah. yeah. 10, 15 yeah. percent. Yeah. To about 10 yeah. to 15. Okay, so yeah. then the result, according to Romans 1, is all of this destruction yeah. that is brought about by our own hands, yeah. which leads me to the argument that the best <laughs> gift that God gave to man yeah. is also its worst enemy, and that's freedom of choice. Free, yeah. free choice. You ain't we chose to take a lifestyle yeah. Yeah. contrary to God, yeah. just like salvation brings you eternal life and all those benefits, sin brings you death and all those yeah. benefits. All those, and right. Paul is saying, we're choosing that. Yeah. People are choosing that. So as a result, God says, you know what? I'm done. Yeah. I can't reach you. Yeah. So I'm giving you up to a reprobate mind. Yeah. It's a difficult uh, uh, path to, to examine because yeah. one wonders, yeah. why didn't God give them up to an apostate mind? Right. Mm -hmm. Reprobate minds can turn. Yeah. Apostate minds cannot. Yeah. That's very true. 
Yeah. It seems even still with letting them go down that old path, he's, he's still, still in. Yes, sir. The man yes. is love personified. And, and you know what? You just hit it on the head, Bishop. And that's what we don't realize. God, he doesn't just love. He is he love. Is love. Yeah. We, we don't understand the totality of that. He can't not love. And so in this process, although he's saying to you emphatically, I, I think this, there probably should have been a word in it. The time will come when I will give you over if you don't stop this. And, and it's not in there, but I, I like to think that that's the yeah, heart of God. Implied. Yes, sure. sir, it's an implication. Sure. So if you don't stop, the end result is I'm gonna give you over to what you want. Sure. And, and it will bring a penalty with it. However, the time to reach, Pastor Tim called it the age of grace, the dispensation. I know we have some that are more covenantal than dispensational, but I like to believe the dispensation of grace is that God has opened a window a period of time to reach those before he gets to the place of saying, I'm giving you up. Can a Christian, born again, mm. sanctified, spirit filled, mm. can they reach a point where God says, you know what? You keep going down this path and you think you're right. I'll just give you over to that until yeah. you're humbled. Yeah. And we can find scripture to validate yeah, it. Yeah, I think absolutely. Yeah. I think absolutely. Yeah, I, you know, I, I think that, now are we talking about from, you're saying until they repent, until. They might die in the sin. Yeah. 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 You know, God. Samson. Yeah. 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 Samson had a lust problem. Yeah. Yeah. But yet he makes the 11th chapter of Hebrews. He does. Right, right. He does. I mean, yeah. the, 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 the enigmatic concept of God, yeah. it's difficult to figure out. It is. He, sends, it is. Uh, he, he brings two angels down to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah, yeah. but yet he waits thousands of years yeah. for people who don't want to be with him. Yeah. yeah. All to save that one yeah. who he has already elected. Yeah. yeah. It's very true. It's very true. Is God involved? in the runnings of this world. He, not in the darkness of the world, but, but because he's God, he's in control. So then he'd have to be in control of the darkness too. According to well, Isaiah, I make good and evil. Yeah, I think, I think there's, there's something about God where he can... Uh, Let it out. <laughs> <laughs> he, can, he has this ability to be able to hold it all dark and light. Right and still be able to be God. Isn't that the message out of Job? Oh, Satan yeah. does what he wants, but I set the boundary for how yeah, far absolutely. he can yeah, go. Just, and as know. wicked as our world yeah. is, yeah. Yes. God has set a boundary that still, Satan yeah. can't go, but yes, so sir. far. Yeah. Oh, you, you, you're ready to make me shout on you television, that, Bishop. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I think That's that, good. You know, in, in, our, in our discussion here, and looking at this, nobody can understand him. He's, he's yeah. just tough to understand. So at my place in life, I'm at the point where I say, I ain't trying anymore. Yeah. I'm just thanking him that he's letting me live. <laughs> and, uh, yes, <laughs> yes. I'm glad he's not yeah. dealing with me yes. like I'm not a son. Yes. But when you look at scripture and you, you, you take what we're going through and look at our culture yes, and you wonder, Lord, how long? I said this mm. to the Lord the other day. Mm. I said, you're the God that destroyed the Egyptians. Yeah. You destroyed the Amalekites. Yeah. You, I don't know how many times you dealt with the Philistines. Absolutely. Why are you letting these people do yeah, what they're do doing what they today? Do. Why yeah. did you let Hamas yeah. bomb Israel like yeah, they I, did in October? Yeah. I said, why didn't you? I don't get this. Yeah. But. The scriptures say he's beyond understanding. He's beyond you don't know why he does it. Yeah. And that's what, what, what generated this, this, this topic. How does God respond yeah. to the times in which we yeah. live? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which then causes us to respond. Absolutely, absolutely. Do we trust God? Yes, we do. Yeah, and I think God responds the way that he's all, always responded with his, with his care, his love, but with his agenda. Yes. God has always, he's, again, scripture says, same today, yesterday, and forevermore, right? Yeah. And so, so he never changes. So God's, God's idea about what is to happen and what he's doing has yeah. always been the same, and it's been redemption. Yeah. It's, yeah. Been, it's been relationship with his creation. Yeah. Yeah. And as much as he wow. could be frustrated wow. with how crazy easy things are in this world, the end goal is relationship and redemption, and, it, and it's, it's still the agenda. And he will go to far lengths. To yeah. get that done. To get that done. Yeah. And, and I think this is the far length. Yeah. I think the end time 
wrap up destruction is going to, and the scripture says it, this is not going to be a time on the earth like it. No. And, and so whatever we've read, it's not going to be that. It's going to multiply it's that. Worse. And it's, it's going to be worse. worse. And I think God is like, you have no idea yeah. what, I, what I'm going to do and can do. It would be very wise to hear that, get on that ark, if you will, and don't get caught in the fray because even, it's going to be bad. Even Jesus said something that scares the bejeebies out of me. <laughs> And you both said, you know, it's going to be worse. Yeah. Jesus said, there's going to be tribulation that the world has never seen before. And then he that's says right. something that's scary. He said, unless those days yes. were short, that's right. he no said, less. nobody would that's have been something. saved. I said, that you mean to tell like me that. with when you look in Revelation, a third of the population, a fourth of yes. the population, yes. Yes. Jesus yes. is saying, but if, if God doesn't shorten it to three and a half oh years, my, oh my, nobody oh would, nobody be would be left. We're talking about a dreadful coming. Oh my God. It's a dreadful coming. Oh so you know, we make this appeal to you if you're out there listening to us on Christian in the Culture. Listen, don't get caught in the fray. Make the right choice to come to Jesus and do it quickly, please, please. I'm sorry. I just had to, no. to just make that appeal uh, because the days are shorter. My wife and I were saying the other day, that, do, do you notice that time seems to be going faster I mean, we just celebrated last year's New Year's Eve and we were just doing it again. You, you blink and the times are moving. Things are speeding up. It's almost like we better redeem the time, make good use of it while the Lord has given us a chance. We make this appeal. I came, Jesus. I came to this, this observation that really just, just kind of hung in my head. We look at things through time. Yes, we do. And God is saying, but I want you to spend eternity, eternity with me. Yeah. So I'll put up with stuff yeah, for, for time. time. Mm -hmm. But true. then when I bring you that into eternity, true. you'll yeah. look back. I mean, there's people that have wow. been with God since the days of Long Genesis time. 1. Right. <laughs> I mean, Enoch's been up there forever <laughs> and he didn't even <laughs> die. And so God is saying, you know, I sent Jesus so yeah. that you could eventually escape yes. this mess yes. and be with me for yes. eternity. Yes. How much does he love us oh, to put up with this yes. just to be able to say, that's the person I'm waiting yes, for. I'm yeah. waiting for that. So I got to put yes. up with everything else yes. to just wait for, for that. that one uh, person. And I'm uh, glad I was that one. I'm glad. Amen. <laughs> I am yes, glad sir. I was yes, that sir. one. <laughs> Praise the Lord. My wow. brothers and sisters, Listen, we, we presented this passage to you today in a very controversial way. Yeah. But we wanted you to see just how far God goes to bring you into his family. Oh, yes. And to repeat what yes. Pastor Brian says, if you're out there listening and you have not made peace with God, Lord, take Lord. this opportunity to do it because the grace of God mm. has appeared to all, all. Paul told Titus, teaching us denying ungodliness and worldly lusts. There's a way we're supposed to live. Yes. And in this wicked culture, you have to live a life that pleases God. Yes. But I like what Pastor Tim said. God wants a relationship with yes. you. He wants to be in relationship with you. In fact, I'll go as far to say covenant relationship. Amen. He wants you to be able to depend upon him. And he wants to depend upon you to yeah. live for him. Yeah. Now, I know you're going through difficult times, politically, economically, maybe even health oriented. Yeah. But we know the God that we serve is able to keep Amen. all Amen. that you place into his hands. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm not sitting in front of you today, just somebody who knows the letter. <laughs> I know God. Yes. And he has brought me through sickness, disease, times when I was down in my heart and in my mind. He has isolated me and insulated me, yes. kept yes, me yes. from stuff and then helped me go through it. Mm, wow. But he's the same God. Mm. He doesn't do things for me and will not do them for you. If you put your trust in him, he will bring you out of whatever dilemma you are in. And I say this to every one of you that are my brothers and sisters in Christ. Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Yes. Don't give up. Don't give in. Don't believe the lies that are coming yes. from the printed media. Jesus Christ is still on the throne. Yes, he is. And we win in the end. Just pick up your Bible, read the book of Revelation. We win in the end. We win. So thanks for joining us today. And remember, God is not an innocent bystander. God is not non-participatory. Everything that's happened 
He is in control, guiding it, directing it, and taking care of you, his people, and making sure you come out of this with victory. Mm. Thanks for joining us today. We will keep you in our prayers, and we believe that God has something special in store for you as you trust him, obey him, and worship him. See you on the next Christian and the Culture. The Christian and the Culture is produced and recorded in the studios of Lighthouse TV. Positively different. God knows more than what he has revealed to you. You're dealing with an infinite God, and he doesn't have to tell you everything. Doctrine are the words that Jesus left. One of the main things we're called to do as the body of Christ, how we're going to win and overcome, is by keeping the doctrine. Now, the little horn is what we would call the Antichrist. Satan has always had somebody prepared to come to that position in every generation. People of God are raving about the Understanding End Time Events and Prophecy Conference. Ryan says, this conference broke down the scriptures into pieces that I could easily understand. Kyle offers, this conference helped bring a greater sense of urgency for me to share with the world the hope that lies within us as sons and daughters of God. And Doug adds, I would recommend any believer serious about their Bible to take a look at what this conference has to offer. This four session conference of teaching and dialogue will help you to better comprehend what the scriptures say about the last days. For your love offering of $30 or more, receive a copy of the entire seminar on CD or DVD. Call 1-800-550-3284 to order your copy today. The Bethel Deliverance app is now available to download for free at Apple Store and Google Play. You can tune into Sunday services through live stream, view video sermons on demand, listen to audio messages through podcasts, send prayer requests, communicate through social media, and you can contribute to the ministry simply by using today's technology. Get access to all of Bethel's media outlets and church events right at your fingertips. Go to the Apple Store or Google Play and download Bethel Deliverance to get connected today. Praise the Lord. I'm Bishop Eric Lambert. I want to welcome you to the Eric Lambert Ministries website. On this website, you will be able to get information about books, CDs, DVDs, and even the printed word designed to help you in your walk with Christ. You'll find information about our YouTube channel and the services that we have at Bethel Deliverance International Church. And we want you to understand that our ministry is designed to lift up Jesus, to glorify his name, and to get you, the listener, connected to the power of the Holy Ghost. I am excited about the Eric Lambert Ministries website, and I want you to join us as often as you can, and we guarantee two things. You'll have a closer walk with Jesus. Number two, your life will be richer. God bless you. Access resources that will enrich your Christian walk today by visiting ericlambertministries.org. That's ericlambertministries.org. The Christian and the Culture is a production of Bethel Deliverance International Church. Thank you for watching. Be blessed.